salamat po uh, Ms. Werlin Lin for that uh, presentation and uh, sharing to us yung pong proseso ng uh, mediation. So, uh, na, na, na pinakita po niya po sa atin na tuloy-tuloy pa rin po ang uh, pagtanggap po natin ng mga complaints through FSEB uh, at saka po sa iba pong mga probinsya po na kung saan kung gusto ng ating partido uh, kung sa probinsya po sila file, magpapahin po sila sa probinsya. So, meron din po silang uh, kanya-kanya pong din na uh, proseso ng pagkatanggap uh, ng kanilang uh, kanilang mga uh, resolution of the complaint. So ito po yun, yung uh, ipapang ko lang po, no? ilarap up ko lang po yung sinabi po ni uh, Ms. Werlin na uh, talagang uh, in-institutionalize in, in po na natin yung uh, no wrong door policy kung saan ang DTI ay tatanggap pa rin po ng mga complaints pagdaw hindi po kanya pong uh, jurisdiction at kung hindi po kanya pong jurisdiction ipapasa po natin sa uh, appropriate agency at uh, meron din po siyang sinabi na kung saan ay uh, uh, meron po mga modes of filing so maaari pong uh, pumunta kayo or uh, pwede po rin uh, other means like yung electronic uh, means of uh, filing the complaint so mandatory pa rin po ang mediation uh, hindi po Uh, shortcut na pupunta ko kayo sa adjudication. So, in-emphasize po yan po ni uh, Ms. Werlin na kailangan pa rin po kayong maganda po ng mediation. At uh, pinaliwanag din mo sa atin ni Ms. Werlin yung step po ng mediation at uh, although nakalagay po sa ating uh, uh, guidelines na yung face-to-face -face, pwede pero uh, dahil po dito sa pandemya well, uh, sino po ba ang gusto pong magkasakit? Uh, so, the <clears throat> FTEG provided the means for that para po tuloy-tuloy pa -tuloy po ang kanilang pinsabisyo na pwede po yung online uh, mediation, teleconferencing, uh, video conferencing, uh, or any other means na accessible po sa partido. So, may eh, bago po pa rin sinabi po si uh, Ms. Perlin, yung certificate to file action tapos po yung uh, yung decision based on mediation agreement at uh, meron po silang uh, issue uh, advisory. So yon, uh, maraming maraming salamat po uh, Ms. Berlin. Then we now move on to another part of uh, redress mechanism, yung kung sinasabi ho natin na education process, uh, education proper. So tipo uh, at kasunto yung partido sa unang layer of redress mechanism, yung mediation, then parties may opt to go to, uh, or party or parties may, go, may opt to go to adjudication proper. So, uh, so po, uh, I would like to introduce to you the presenter, the attorney, Joseph Panitan. Attorney, please uh, uh, give you now the screen to present your uh, topic. Uh, hello, good morning, everyone. Um, before before I start the presentation, I would just like to emphasize that uh, we really need to take advantage of those sa uh, mediation proceedings. Um, while uh, general rule is the adjudication when it comes up with decisions, we normally we uh, as a matter of practice and as a matter of procedure, we uh, we look the case. We look at the case in its totality based on the evidence as presented, based on the documents that were submitted, uh, and we normally, you judiciously as much as possible, come up with the uh, resolutions along these lines. But th th I want to emphasize the mediation simply because some. Well, uh, sorry. Um, what I'm saying is, uh, uh, in adjudication. Uh, while we look at the evidences and we and normally uh, uh, we uh, tilt we are we tilt towards uh, not not giving penalties, uh, but if the circumstances really warrant based on evidence, then the appropriate penalties based on the rules will be imposed. But the the reason why I want to emphasize in mid is because during mid the risk 
of getting imposed for purposes ng respondents, the risk of getting imposed of getting imposed or having liability for fines or penalties, hindi po nag arise So that's why we stro I strongly encourage yung parties really to to consider yung mediation and really come up with a solution. So sa mediation naman, it doesn't really mean na, na, na you win all. So you, some, you win some, you lose some, parang nal. But it's a, we don't, sa mediation, we don't really need to look whether, whether or not uh, uh, sino yung nanalo, sino yung natalo, whether or not, uh, whether tama ba tayo, ano ba yung katotohanan. So we don't look at that, but it's more of, we should focus on how do we how do we settle how do we end the controversy in a manner that is acceptable to both parties without really saying na nanalo ko or natalo ko or something like that so we have to look at it in a way na it's really a mode of settling yung yung disputes so i so don't so i see uh based uh, participants natin most of most of our are also coming from the uh, establishment. So, I think we should really take advantage of dun sa mediation portion because once it gets into adjudication and the adjudication officer based on evidence sees that um, there is really a need to impose penalty, then DTI will not be hesitant to impose yung appropriate penalties. So, with that, uh, let me start yung presentation ko. So, uh, earlier on, it was... Um, discuss that there is what you call initial complaint. So when it goes when it goes to adjudication, we now have what you call a formal complaint. And formal complaint should be verified, yeah, dated and signed. No? Um, it should include the addresses of the parties, allegations, uh, uh, the allegation that the complaint went through mediation and the best proof of this is your certificate to file action. No? And there should be a statement uh, statement of material facts and circumstances. Paano mo, why you say that there was a commission or a violation? Uh, then there should be a certification also again um, um, uh, and other certification against non-form shopping and yung, uh, and it should be notarized. No? So next slide please. Hello? Next slide please. So, um, incomplete and uh, in for incomplete formal complaint. No? So basically, as a general rule, if uh, if the complaint is uh, if the complaint is lacking uh, lacking in some material facts, uh, normally it will be dismissed. But uh, under the current scheme of things, under the new rules, uh, hindi namin siya idi dismiss outright, but uh, yung party uh, whose uh, complaint is insufficient or defective will be given an opportunity to explain to 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 explain or uh, not, not really explain but to complete to complete your requirements to complete the formal requirements so well under the new rules also if the issue is only on verification certification non forum shopping normally uh, this will be supplied. This can be supplied uh, by the adjudication officer. Uh, but considering that you, we now discourage yung face to face, no, because because uh, previously, sana when you appear it's in the office and there is no, uh, it's not notarized. Normally, the adjudication officer can administer the oath. But considering the circumstances now, na we 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 do not encourage really people going out of their homes, so. Um, and yung uh, online notarization is not yet allowed, no? So, we parang, we ha you really have to find a way na yung documents are already complete once you file because uh, we don't also want yung other party to be using this as an excuse for the complaint to be dismissed because CDTI as a general rule would want really to decide cases based on the merits. Okay, so next slide please. So um, venue and venue and filing, venue filing and exercise of jurisdiction. So dito sa general, uh, dito sa based on the new rules, 
the what is given importance right now is the agreement of the parties in so far as venue is concerned but in the absence of in the absence of uh, a stipulated venue on the agreement or on the contract the you know, the rules were crafted in such a way that the complainant complainant is given a considerable leeway on where to file the complaint so it can be with the DTIF tab it can be with the provincial offices or it can be with the regional offices of the DTI um, based on the rules uh, a venue can be uh, venue can be anywhere where the transaction took place uh, where the violation was committed place where the execution of the contract place resident place of residence of the complainant at the time of the transaction at the time of the violation at the time of filing of the complaint or place of residence of the respondent business domicile of the respondent at the time of the transaction at the time of the violation at the time of the filing of the complaint all at the option po ng complainant so si complainant po yung masusunod so wherever he wants the complaint so long as as sinunod niya yung so long as he followed yung uh, yung rules natin on venue so <clears throat> uh, Next slide, please. So, um, as a general rule, uh, do um, sa in FTEB, we have a uh, we have a number of lawyers and um, and a low graduates who have, uh, who are handling consumer complaints. So, no, in the setup of FTEB. Uh, it is very unlikely that uh, a person who um, mediated will be the same person who, who, who will decide on the case. So as a matter of policy, we do not allow that those that are discussed in mediation will, be, uh, will, will come to the knowledge of the person who is deciding the case. So normally, if such is the case, we raffle it to a person who has no idea what the case is all about. So, but however, I think in the regions and in the provincial offices, considering that there are um, merong lack of personnel, it is very likely sometimes that uh, the mediation officer is the same person who decides on the case. Uh, but one thing I can assure you if, is for the, those in the private sector that uh, people from DTI are really uh, persons of integrity, so much so na uh, even if we come to these things, no, we we can really wear several hats. Like we can be a mediator, we can be a next slide, please. So, um, well, what is what is good with the new rules right now is once the once you are issued um, once you are issued a uh, certificate to file action. Uh, you are given also a period, a reasonable period of time, no? within which to f really think a uh, period within which to think whether or not to file the case. So sometimes, because we're after the mediation, we may not be ready with our evidences. So uh, really, um, yung uh, complainant is given a period within which to file. So, but however, once that. Um, once that the complaint is is filed and it's complete under the rules the adjudication officer or the hearing officer or the consumer arbitration officer as as it is called under the consumer act um uh, will have to issue an order directing both parties to submit their position papers no um uh, re, uh prior to this it was all it was uh, discussed about yung uh, the mediation agreement uh, uh, that is entered into during the mediation. So this is really one of the good things about this uh, these new rules because uh, ngayon, based on the new rules, if the parties during mediation comes up with an agreement, they can now submit this particular document to the adjudication officer. And instead of the adjudication officer issuing a NOAA, the adjudication officer will or issue an order 
declaring the case submitted for decision. And and in this particular instance, the adjudication <laughs> officer really will not issue a decision per se, but he will order a he will issue a decision based on compromise agreement and the decision will be based on what the parties agreed. So much so that after that particular decision has become final, uh, but really that, that decision is based on the agreement of the parties. And if one of the parties do, uh, will not follow that particular decision based on the compromise agreement, then it, that, that particular decision issued by the adjudication officer based on the compromise agreement can now be the subject of a writ of execution. Meaning, um, the sheriff, let's say, for example, if the agreement is that the respondent will pay 100 pesos and after the agreement has been signed and submitted to the adjudication officer, a uh, decision is rendered based on compromise agreement or based on the mediation agreement and it is not followed, then the sheriff will now go to the place of the establishment to get that 100 pesos if 100 pesos has been agreed upon or if not, then the sheriff will may levy properties or garnish uh, bank, bank accounts of the, the respondent. So, uh, may so I move forward doon. No? But uh, essentially, uh, uh, a notice of adjudication will be issued. But in so far as uh, mediation agreements is concerned, ANOA will not be issued, but an order declaring the case submitted for decision will be issued. So, next slide, please. Next slide, please. All right. So, um, the NOAA, uh, under the new rules now, uh, allows us to, to, to send it through uh, email. No? So, we now send the NOAA via email. And, and uh, via email, via courier, via personal service. But right now, um, considering that... Uh, you know, courier services are um, uh, and dito, marami gumagamit. So what we normally do is we, right now, we send it via email. So next slide, please. So for the respondent, it has a different rule actually. So it does not provide, the rules does not provide that it should be sent via um, email. So it should be by a personal, uh, personal service, courier, or registered mail. However, um, no, you, these rules were crafted during the time that there's no pandemic yet, so it was not contemplated. But um, right now, what we did, what FTEP did, was to write the Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, and, norm, uh, and we have an understanding with them that... Uh, SEC will provide email addresses of yung mga corporations. So, as far as FTEB is concerned, if this is your declared um, email address uh, SEC, and that is your valid address as far as we are concerned, then, and FTEB will now um, send notices to corporations also via email. Or yung other parties, we now also send it via email uh, yung mga notice of adjudication. Next slide, please. Right, uh, proof of service and receipt, no? Um, well, ba basically, this, is, this does not concern yung mga, mga establishments, but basically, this will concern yung DTI, because um, you also have DTI, a lot of DTI participants here. So basically, uh, personal service. So normally, we require na merong proof talaga na na-receive, no? Because it's part of due process na dapat you should be informed na merong parang complaint sa inyo. But in the current scheme of things, as far as DTI is concerned, uh, as far as FTEB, I mean, is concerned, no? um, if we send yung mga uh, 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 NOAA uh, or orders to doon sa registered email address ng corporation, then for us, as far as FTEB is concerned, those are valid uh, service of summons for purposes of acquiring jurisdiction over that particular establishment. Next, next slide, please. So, <clears throat> under the new rules, meron po tayong sinasabi na unserved NOAA. No? If for one reason, uh, the NOAA cannot be served to dun sa respondent, 
uh, because of uh, several reasons like business closure, incorrect address provided, uh, incorrect address provided by the complainant, or the address cannot be reasonably located despite uh, due diligence and earnest efforts to do the same. No? Uh, under the rules, the adjudication officer is uh, should issue an order directing the complainant to furnish the AO, the adjudication officer, uh, within five working days within which to provide the true and correct address of the respondent. So if, if despite diligent efforts, uh, the same cannot be located or cannot be served, uh, uh, then, uh, then, um, then the, the, the case uh, will be considered archived. Uh, however, it can be revived subject, uh, it, can be the, it can be subject to revival if and when the appropriate um, information uh, will be provided uh, subject to the limitation on prescription, which was earlier discussed by Ms. Werlin, which is two years. Um, um, uh, that's why sa, for those in the public, po, no, so kahit na, I know even if we uh, work for establishments also, we are likewise consumers and everyone is, everybody else, every one of us are consumers those who have a brick and mortar stores parang ganun, no? uh, while under the rules talaga si DTI online online na uh, merchants are really required to have a, a brick and mortar address pa rin for purposes of uh, redress no that's why i strongly talaga recommend and remind everyone to only transact yung not those who on social media na na, na we, we may have difficulty later on uh getting redress simply because we cannot send the NOAA to those uh, establishments. So, yun po. Uh, next slide, please. So, under the new rules, uh, under the new rules, uh, uh, the position paper, well, the NOAA basically tells us to submit yung position paper, you know, but, and the NOAA says that the period is a non-extendable 10 working days from receipt of the NOAA. So um, I think in the old rules, parang it was only five days. But now with the new rules, medzo must, it's a, it provides for a longer period. So 10, it's not even calendar days, but it's 10 working days from receipt. Um, now, the, the rules provide na that the respondents and the complainants or the parties to the to the dispute should submit original copies uh, original copies no but uh, technically naman si DTI uh, under our da, uh, under the 7 2006 no we are not really bound by the technical rules on evidence so while we strongly encourage really na original copies but um, well, photocopies can be submitted provided that uh, some sort of validations may be, may be submitted. But yung original copies, we strongly encourage yung submission for purposes ng evidence. Uh, for those, so that the evidence will have, you know, probative value and uh, they will be considered really in the decisions. So next slide, please. Hello, Jerry. P pwede pa confirm if and when naririnig mo ako, Jerry? Jerry Calderon? Yes, uh, pwede, attorney. Uh, naririnig. Right, okay. uh, Nobody seems to be talking, eh, so I, I thought na I might have been cut off or something. I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot to turn on yung video ko because I'm saving yung bandwidth. So, yeah, anyhow. Um, okay, go ahead. So, go ahead. Thank you so much, Jerry. Um, uh, yo. One innovation also under the new rules is the requirement uh, the requirement to first copy furnish the other party the other party a copy of goods of pleading that needs to be submitted sa adjudication in which in this particular case is which in this particular case is the position paper and other evidences no um yon and also um, under the new rules also, it provides that um, 
if and when the adjudication officer or the hearing officer or the consumer arbitration officer finds it necessary, he may really require submission of other pleadings, which should be submitted within three working days from the receipt of that particular order. Um, based on the rules, uh, normally there should be a face-to-face -face hearing, and if dura during that hearing the, the adjudication finds it necessary uh, for the adjudication officer to come up with a more learned or justifiable decision, he may order the submission of the pleadings. But uh, considering that we do not allow anymore or we do not really encourage really yung face to face na, na meetings at this point in time that is still uh, the, a vaccine is yet to be developed. So normally um, uh, we require yung submissions pa rin by, uh, by online pa rin. So, but anyhow, uh, do, do, let's not forget that under the new rules, uh, we have to copy furnish the other party. Ngayon sabi natin, because we did not also contemplate na uh, uh, th this, this pandemic will hit us and it's hitting us really hard. No, um, sa amin, I think uh, showing a proof or email that indeed we have uh, submitted yung uh, pa pleading to the other party, then that will suffice, no? But, you know, sa amin naman, we're not strict. If and when the other party says na the, she did not, he or she did not receive, then uh, probably yung sa DTI offices or FTEB or the adjudication officers for that matter will just furnish yung other party nila nga copy. But, uh, you know, for purposes of uh, avoiding later on technicalities, uh, dismissals based on technicalities, um... I think we just have to comply with the rules. No? Hindi naman, sa tingin ko, it's not really difficult to give the other parties uh, copy, uh, to copy furnish yung other party. So next slide, please. Yeah, oh, all right. Um, this one is also a new provision under the rules. So if a lawyer, if there are, please yung, yung, so for respondents and complainants, um, if you want yung lawyer need to be furnished of the documents, uh, they have to enter yung appearance nila. Otherwise, they'll be excluded from receiving decisions and, and all other pleadings or orders that will be issued by the adjudication officer. So there should be a formal entry of appearance. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, after the submission of the position paper and and if the he, adjudication officer does not find it necessary to call for a hearing or the requirement of submission of a, um, submission of other pleadings or necessary documents, uh, the adjudication officer will now um, issue a decision. So under the rules, uh, uh, the decision should be issued uh, within 15 days from the time the case is submitted for uh, decision. Um, can we go back to the previous slide? Like that, that attorney. Okay, sorry. Okay, na. Uh, let's go back. Go back. Okay. All right. Okay, na. Let's go na. next. Next slide. So anyhow, so the a decision. So for purposes ng mga for for purposes uh, of DTI employees who are in this particular meeting, who are going to issue decisions. No, under the current rules, it says that uh, there should be a a decision should contain the following. Um, uh, things. So number one, relevant facts of the case or ultimate facts or fa what facts have been proven based on the pleadings that were submitted by the parties. So what are the issues that are involved and applicable law and jurisprudence uh, are conclusion, arguments, and reasons uh, why that particular fact is applicable, why that particular fact has been admitted into evidence or why is it considered as a ultimate facts uh, and what is the application of those facts to the law and or jurisprudence that they would made us conclude that whether whether or not that particular that particular um, 
uh, a particular case is uh, is decided in such a way. So and then that the decision should contain the uh, should contain yung reliefs that are granted. No? Um, reminder lang po sa mga taga DTA ngayon. So we have to make when we write decisions, we should make it a point always to put things there, the decisions very clearly. So if it's a refund, if it's a refund, it should be um, what the particular amount to be refunded. If, if, if and when you say that it's repair, then you should provide a period within which to repair. And if it cannot be repaired, then the alternative decision to refund and what particular amount to be refunded. Uh, because I think there in the past there had been uh, cases where an order for repair was done and it was not repaired and then the parties now are left to, in in quandary as to uh, what to do afterwards if it's not repaired. So I think uh, we should always have to be very clear in the decisions so much so that if it's a repair, uh, repair is not possible, then a, a part refund can be made but uh, the the amount should be very, very specific. Uh, yeah, okay. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Right, so in a nutshell, uh, the adjudication process is like this. So once we receive a complaint, it's assigned to an EO. An adjudication officer or a hearing officer or a consumer arbitration officer for that matter. Uh, and then there's an issue once of the notice of adjudication or in cases where there is a mediation agreement, what is issued is an, uh, it's an order uh, submitting the case for decision. And then the NOAA would say that the parties are required to submit the position paper. And then if subse subsequent pleadings are required, then it should, they should be filed <clears throat> not more than three three working days from the date of receipt of the order requiring the filing of the same. Uh, of course, let us not forget to copy for each the other party of any and all documents that we are going to submit to the adjudication officer. Next slide, please. So, um, uh, then the, the case is submitted for decision uh, under the rules. Uh, the case is submitted for decision if and when after the submission of the position paper of the parties or after the lapse of the period within which to file a position paper. And no position paper is filed upon termination of the clarificatory hearing uh, uh, or after the filing of additional documents required by the adjudication officer or after the lapse of the 3D period for filing of documents whichever is earlier. So then afterwards, the decision shall be rendered within 15 working days from the time uh, it is the, the, the case is deemed submitted for resolution. So for those who are, uh, who are in the private sector here, see DTI uh, guarantees really that we come up with the decision and not later than 15 working days. In fact, sometimes we even render decisions within period of 10 days. Some adjudication officer even issued uh, five days from the time that uh, 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 the time that the uh, position papers are are submitted. No, uh, from the time the you know, so we really uh, comply with these particular rules because really we want to have a swift consumer uh, redress. So next slide, please. So. Um, uh, this is just a sort of a reminder for those uh, submitting documents to FTEB adjudication. Uh, and probably you can also use this uh, advisory for the region. So, so we require kasi that the documents be in PDF format because once you submit us to us, we normally submit. Um, uh, it's easier to, to look at the documents also. Uh, pag a PDF format kasi there's no way that the document will be uh, translated, I, I mean like like altered or something. So uh, that, that, that's the good thing about uh, PDF format. So uh, when you file your complaint, uh, you know, there's a link sa DTI website po, no, that, which is here that you can uh, 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 that you can uh, log on, something like that, so, so that you can get the form and then you can fill it up 
or ano, when you file a consumer complaint. So, but again, we require it to be notarized and then you attach the certificate to file action in, in one one valid government issued ID. So, so we have a format really when you file consumer complaints, but so it is easier to sort also when you file the complaints and uh, so it, it doesn't get lost along the way. No? So it will be easier for us too because a lot of adjudication officers receive several uh, receive or handle several cases. So we don't want to confuse young adjudication officers and so for us the so in so far as the pleadings that you submit. So we require that you use we strongly encourage you to use this particular format. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. All right. So, again, it's just a reminder that uh, when you receive the NOAA, you have to submit it within 10 working days. You can submit the position paper within 10 working days. No, uh, if you want to study the rules, it's uh, it's in our website. It's DTI DAO 20.02 series of 2020. However, uh, caveat lang po, no? there are still provisions under DAO 7 2006 uh, that are still applicable uh, in so far as yung procedures are concerned. So you might want to take a look at uh, DTI DAO 7 2006 as well. Uh, in relation to DAO 20.02 for purposes of yung DTI procedures. But, you know, that, that this is yung format that we're, we're saying. And then, uh, again, we guarantee na we really, we, we, we really issue decisions within 15 working days. All right, next slide, please. Hello, next slide. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, post-judgment remedy. So like I said earlier, there are still provisions under DAO 7 series of 2006 that are uh, still applicable. Uh, it has not been totally amended by DAO 20.02. So for purposes po ng appeal, so if anybody, the parties are not happy with the decision, if and when they think uh, na you're not satisfied with the decision, you're not convinced. No? But the rules provide that you can file an appeal with the with the office of the secretary, uh, but you know the right to up. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, it's not really the. Yung uh, appeal is not really a. Uh, it's a mere privilege that you really have to exercise within the period provided. Otherwise, it's lost. You no, know? so anong effect if you do not file the appeal uh, within the within the appropriate period provided by the rules? You no, know? so the decision becomes final. Uh, the decision becomes final and that, that decision can be the subject of a writ of execution and eventually um, it could be executed, of course. Uh, I mean, like, like if, it, uh, up, if the decision orders a penalty and payment, a penalty and a refund or something, that those can be implemented already. So we just would like to remind you, the parties, really, uh, there is a motion for reconsideration is not allowed. So, so we're really uh, we we uh, we place this on the slide simply because the filing of a motion for reconsideration for consumer complaints uh, will not pull the running of the 15-day period. So, if we fail to act on the motion for reconsideration and that particular 15-day period has lapsed, then you lose that privilege to file an appeal. So, um, um, under the rules. Uh, an appeal may be sent to the office of the secretary uh, on the following grounds of grave abuse of discretion, that the order or decision is in excess of jurisdiction or the decision or orders, the decision is not supported by evidence and there is serious errors in findings of facts. And the, there are two things that you need to do. You have to file a memorandum of appeal and at the same time, a file a notice of appeal to the adjudication officer who issued the resolution. Uh, next slide, please. And next slide, please. And uh, no. so, like what I said earlier, uh, if no appeal is filed, then the decision becomes final and that decision can already be implemented. Um, well, as a matter of uh, uh, procedure, we normally require the parties to file a motion for issuance of writ of execution 
and the motion should include there the periods where the parties information when the parties received the decision so that there is proof that the, there is already been the lapse of the 15 day period because your 15 day period only starts to run after the receipt of the party so ibig sabihin if you uh, it's only when you receive the copy of the decision that yung 15 day period with which to file an appeal starts to run so when you file a motion for issuance of free the um, material facts which which includes yung filing at uh, the date material facts on the date of receipt of the parties should be included in the motion so yun. And, and and normally uh, once we receive it and we find everything in order we normally issue writ of execution so okay um, na, gani, um just a reminder lang po no um well but that ends my presentation but uh, uh sa huli lang po no um you know um not really saying na na we really encourage discourage um litigation because while 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 it is true na we may be quick in coming up with decisions no uh the thing is when it goes on appeal and considering that the appeal is filed with the office of the secretary and there is only one secretary for that matter and and all all cases coming from the regions from the provinces go to the uh, appeal to the office of the secretary so it may take a bit of time uh before coming up with the redress that's why i really strongly encourage uh i really strongly encourage really parties na to to settle na lang no? so kasi if you come if we come up with decisions normally we come up with penalties but if you settle you know no 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 penalties will be imposed so yun lang po so uh, thank you so much for your for listening and uh, uh, i hope uh, we were able to help you and um uh, provide you but for better guidance po uh, uh, the presentation was more of a verbatim um, lift uh, yung presentation was a verbatim reproduction actually of the provisions of DAO 20-02 it's a fairly new DAO it was just signed by the under secretary Castello around February 7 and it's now the rule that is being implemented by FTEB and the rest of the DTI uh, offices uh, provinces and regions. So, maraming salamat and thank you for your patience and, and indulgence. Uh, good day po sa inyo lahat.